Now my Hiramai. Welcome back to another episode of the video podcast series Influences at LU, brought to you by Lincoln University's Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce with me, your host Hafsa Ahmed. This is where I will be asking faculty experts questions about the most pressing topics facing the world today, hoping for insights to lead us through these uncertain times. Today our topic is tourism, what now for New Zealand? And my guest today is Anthony Bryan, who is the head of department Global Values, Chains and Trade at the Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce. He specializes in hotel and tourism management. Tony is also the visiting professor of hotel management and adjunct senior research fellow to the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management in Dubai. Welcome, Tony. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So before I begin today's discussion on tourism, what now for New Zealand, I thought it was good to give an overview of New Zealand's tourism sector. So the Tourism Satellite Account, or TSA, which is the official annual measurement of New Zealand tourism business industry figures, released by Stats New Zealand in December 2019, showed that total annual tourism spend had reached $40.9 billion. International visitors spent uh, $17.2 billion, while domestic visitors spent $23.7 billion. According to these figures from December 2019, 229,000 people were directly employed and another 163,000 were indirectly employed by tourism in New Zealand, which is around 14.4% of the total number of people employed in New Zealand. Wow. Tourism is also identified as New Zealand's largest export earner, providing 20.4% of New Zealand's total export receipts. It makes a direct contribution to GDP of 5.8% and a further indirect contribution of 4%. So Tony, the first question is a very obvious one, which is all of New Zealand's exploring. What now for New Zealand's tourism industry? Well, what now is we're just taking a bit of a breather. The future for New Zealand, it will be a slow recovery built on the domestic tourism, as you, as you mentioned in those figures, it, that takes up about 60% of the New Zealand total spend. So at the moment, we're missing 40% of our international spend there. What now in terms of challenges going forward at the moment is one of our labour force as we come to re-enter. It's going to be challenging to recapture the people that we've lost because of the loss in tourism. A number of them were foreign, ex foreign workers on visiting visas, working holidays. They've obviously gone home. So we've lost a lot of intellectual property at the moment, and we need to attract that back from industries that are, are grabbing our great staff uh, from people into construction to forestry. Mm -hmm. uh, we will need to struggle to get them back soon. From there, of course, we've got the, the operators who will naturally want to offer discounts, and I'll come, might come back to that later on, uh, in, the, in the, the need to get operating again, attracting customers with discounts is, is a good thing in some cases, but in a service economy that does present challenges. You still need to be able to make enough money to operate, and that's not as easy in a service-based economy, an experiential economy. From there, we've got our infrastructural challenges. We have a great infrastructure for New Zealand tourism and for our New Zealanders as well. Uh, it was under pressure because of the, the numbers of tourism that we had. It's under less pressure at the moment, obviously, but that existing infrastructure still needs to be maintained, even while we don't have the pressure on it. And we need to support that through the local government authorities, through their funding which a lot of that at the moment is resting with the ratepayer. So the tourism coming back will help spread those particular costs going forward. Mm. Thank you, Tony, for those initial um, insights into what now for our tourism in terms of the challenges. Now, um, indeed, you know, the pandemic has exposed for us our vulnerabilities and highlighted, you know, that there are some things that need to change. So has there, so the, um, this unprecedented situation, has, has it forced any innovation in the tourism industry? 
In the tourism industry in general, yes. If we look at the service sector itself, it's an experiential opportunity for people. And that is very well used in terms of technology and that the innovations in technology is, is very good in the tourism sector now. But we, one of the greatest initiatives at the moment is the aircraft electric engines. They, just last month, we saw the first commercial flight from purely 100% electric engines. Obviously, New Zealand is, a, a, is an island and 98% of our people come via air. So the carbon emissions there are pretty high. What we're looking at there is how to reduce those carbon emissions, help the environment, help the planet. People will still want to travel and we never waste a crisis and that in be, the in innovation of electric will, will ramp up significantly as much as our low emission aircrafts that are currently traveling. So I think the innovation is gonna come in transportation. Unfortunately for New Zealand though, our land mass and our small population doesn't allow us to pick up the innovations that some countries have in terms of uh, transportation on the ground, trains and systems. Our, our pure land mass doesn't allow that at the moment. But we're on our way and innovation is, is, is catching up pretty fast with us in that way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tony. And I think you made a very interesting comment there about we never waste a crisis. Because um, uh, I was reading uh, an article recently where Bill Gates is praising the um, the initiative which has been started with the Greek National Tourism Organization in cooperation with Google, which is uh, an initiative called Google from Home, uh, Greece from Home. Sorry, and it it is an opportunity that that they initiated uh, this virtual environment. Uh, uh, where you know people can experience the Greek culture and be inspired by the country's attractions. So it basically builds on content from YouTube videos and allows people to take uh, virtual tours of archaeological sites and museums, experience beautiful scenes of nature, and even walk through tour, uh, uh, walking tours or visit restaurants all virtually. So there's definitely uh, opportunities that. Um, come out of these challenges. So the next question I think would be in, on the lines of what are the opportunities here for New Zealand's tourism industry to relook at some of the existing approaches we had before COVID-19 uh, mm. came into our lives? Mm. When well, New Zealand was coping with tourism before pre-COVID, before March uh, this year, I'll have to say just because we were we had so much tourism. It was our infrastructure was creaking in amongst some of this, the the volumes we had, but we were still coping, and we don't want to uh, lose that opportunity of having all that great infrastructure there, having this great country, having people come here. It's going to be now getting them back once the borders open and become that premium destination. If that change is what we need to make, it's to our premium becoming a premium destination. That means that we will be able to yield better from the volume that we had. We don't need to grow the volume, we need to yield better out of that volume. So our infrastructure is here, it's good, it needs to be maintained, but we need to help um, that through our tourism sector. The, the distance from New Zealand, is distance from the world is, is an advantage. We are away from major populations. We've got fantastic scenery. We've got fantastic culture. We've got our environment is what people know about New Zealand. And that hasn't gone away. And I do believe people will come back for that. And as much as we can virtualize some of that as in tasting what they can come and see, they will want to come and see it. So in terms of going forward, we, we are ready once those borders are open and it still has a very good future. Mm. So uh, in terms of, you know, how you've talked about the infrastructure, is, is there going to be an opportunity that people are going to relook really at how that uh, infrastructure is funded and maintained going forward? The, I think what this situation has highlighted is the value of tourism to New Zealand. And yes, the, the impact that the, the tourists have on infrastructure. Uh, that needs to be funded by local authorities in the main or central government in the, in the major New Zealand areas. Mm. But that said, tourism has its part to play in that. 
And as a, a user and recipient of the tourism spend, that needs to be part of the payback for that infrastructure. So there will be remodels. I'm sure there will be models, mm. uh, even models that Lincoln University have put forward regarding how to future fund the infrastructure that's impacting uh, by or impacted by tourism. It's all solvable. It's not a problem. And we will be able to achieve that going forward. I love the optimism there, Tony. So now I think the, 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 the most important question and the most pressing question is, when will it recover? Soon. I, I, I believe that as soon as the countries start to open their borders, mm. that we will see a faster return to tourism than what is, might be currently put out as the, what I might say, the very distant ones. I think that 2021 will be a strong recovery uh, for us. The, we're going into winter as we speak, but as we come out of that and move into summer and the borders open, it's our chance to shine New Zealand to the world again. And as people become uh, interested in that travel and feel safe, I believe that we are well equipped to handle that. So I would like to think that, and I do think, I believe 2021, uh, and, and the summer for New Zealand of 2021 will be a good, a good re-entry point. We, we are well and truly ready for that at that point. So I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. Yeah, we can see that, Tony. <laughs> so I, I know you briefly mentioned that you wanted to talk about discounting prices. So what's your advice on that? Well, the, the aspect of getting domestic traveling domestic in New Zealand traveling is a really great one. And, and we do want to check out our own backyard and see New Zealand and don't leave home till you've seen the country as such. Uh, that's great. And we want to make sure that people can experience New Zealand. But many of our operations are huge structural operations. If you take our major international hotels, you take our airline, so you take our, uh, our tourism, uh, shot over jets, uh, anything to do with tourism. Or, they're, they're big, normally big capital asset items there. Now, in some cases, they, they're fixed assets and they've got fixed costs. So if for you to open some of your operations, it's a, quite an expense. And unless you get the volume ongoing, not just an immediate hit as we had in the last Queen's Birthday weekend, you can spend a lot of money getting it open and if you discount down, it's actually questionable if you covered your costs. Mm. And so then you, you had a short injection of cash. You, you hope you bought loyalty with that, but that's not always the research would say, yes, that doesn't always happen. Mm. But then you need to maintain that uh, ability going forward. So uh, I believe that there is a, a case not to discount. The research backs that up that yield appropriately and strategically open your operations appropriately. That will see you through this, this tough period while we come back into 2021 much stronger. But discounting has been proven to delay liquidation. It, mm. it gives you a, an instant boost, but long-term, it can actually be quite detrimental. Mm. That's not the news that domestic tourists want to hear, I appreciate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and and we all hope that you know there is light at the end of this tunnel. However, in the meantime, as, as you've mentioned, Tony, that we want to have domestic travel, and you know that there are ongoing talks that are happening about these various travel bubbles that might come up in the future with uh, countries in the Pacific. I know there is a lot of emphasis that has been put on Kiwis being urged to you know back your backyard. So, you know, people can travel in the backyard and experience home before they go overseas when the borders open up. So I really want to thank you, Tony, for these really optimistic uh, insights that you have shared with us today. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And if you wish, if any of you wish to connect with Tony, his details are available on Lincoln University's uh, website under staff profiles. As for me, I'll be back bringing you more expert insights from the faculty with another episode. To our viewers and listeners, thank you very much once again for joining us. We look forward to connecting with you. So if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please email me at hafsa.emad at lincoln.ac.nz or mess you can also message me on my LinkedIn profile. Kakite and see you again.